the 1859 publication of Charles Darwin's book on evolutionary biology on the origin of species by means of natural selection, or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life, is significant both historically and scientifically. Today, it is widely acknowledged that Darwinian theory, particularly concerning evolution, is the most influential theory in biology and the natural history of species. The theory's advancement of the natural selection system has been utilized and misused in several other domains. Throughout his life, Darwin published six revised versions of On the Origin of Species, although he always saw it as just the popularized abstract of a larger book that he never finished. The essential ideas he outlined in On the Origin of Species, which he felt lacked sufficient scientific proof, are expanded upon in natural selection, a more thorough scientific explanation. Because Alfred Russell Wallace, a colleague, separately but concurrently, defined the natural selection theory, he first gave up on the wider endeavor. After receiving a draft of Wallace's study on the topic in March 1958, Darwin decided to devote more of his time to writing on the origin of species, which he finished the following year. A portion of the larger book, titled The Variation of Animals and Plants Under Domestication, was published in 1868, however. Natural selection theory is presented in On the Origin of Species as a framework for comprehending and describing species and variations, as well as their creation from common ancestry across millennia. According to this idea, organisms that have random but advantageous mutations can survive in their environment and procreate, producing more offspring that also have the same change and benefit. New species are formed throughout time as a result of the accumulation of characteristic variations over successive generations of this process. Darwin methodically developed this idea and applied it to a wide range of challenging problems in biology, geology, natural history, breeding, and paleontology. On the origin of species was very controversial during Darwin's lifetime. Even though the scientific community mostly agrees with its fundamental assumptions, and the theory is today regarded as the cornerstone of evolutionary biology, it is nevertheless controversial and sometimes misinterpreted. The theory of independent creation was the dominant paradigm for understanding the origin of species in Darwin's day. However, studies by Darwin and other proponents of natural selection theory finally overthrew this view in scientific circles. This viewpoint, which sometimes rested on philosophical and theological presumptions that ran counter to Darwinian evolution, persisted among certain communities throughout the 20th century and continues to do so now, but with decreasing significance. On the origin of species remains the foundational work on natural selection theory, even though many others in Darwin's day also supported it. The majority of the 14 chapters of On the Origin of Species are dedicated to the scientific application of natural selection theory. Darwin starts by summarizing the development of the idea throughout time, highlighting important publications and scientific breakthroughs. The brief preface indicates that the book is just a piece of a much larger work, recognizes his obligation to others, especially Thomas Malthus, and explains that the goal of his study is to obtain an understanding of mechanisms of species modification and co-adaptation. In an attempt to explain the reasons behind species variability in domesticated breeding environments, Chapter 1, Variation Under Domestication, notes that breeders make changes for their benefit rather than the benefit of the organism, and that the conditions of life are crucial in identifying the causes of variability. The investigation is expanded to the natural world in Chapter 2, Variation Under Nature and this becomes the main subject of the remainder of the book. This chapter spends a lot of time on the distinction that Darwin believes is ultimately arbitrary between species and varieties.
The rivalry between species and among individuals of the same species is the subject of chapter three, the struggle for existence, which examines this intricate web of relationships. The core idea of the book is established by the harsh circumstances of existence and the fierce battle among species for limited resources. The fourth chapter, Natural Selection, builds on the preceding chapter's summary of the main ideas by describing the rejection of harmful variations and the preservation of favorable variations. Darwin uses modified descent from common ancestry to illustrate how natural selection operates. This chapter contains the single diagram in the book, which is referenced in later chapters. It depicts a species evolutionary history in a very basic manner. Natural selection is determined by hidden processes of natural law, as Darwin explains in Chapter 5, Laws of Variation. Darwin highlights how little is known about these rules by scientists, and this issue of human ignorance of natural processes recurs often throughout the book. In Chapter 6, Difficulties on Theory, the hypothesis of natural selection is questioned and addressed. At the end of this chapter, Darwin recognizes that the conditions of existence are the supreme rule governing the shape of every organism, even the unity of type. In Chapter 7, Instinct, the gradual processes of natural selection are used to examine the very intricate instinctive behavioral patterns, such as those of ants and honeybees. Chapter 8, Hybridism, addresses a possible challenge to the legitimacy of natural selection by navigating the issue of sterility among hybrid species while upholding the significance of variety and diversity in sex. The fossil record is the subject of chapters 9, on the imperfection of the geological record, and 10, on the geological succession of organic beings. Darwin thinks that any argument against natural selection based on the fossil record has to be carefully examined since he views it as being very restricted and incomplete. However, what little information the fossil record does give does support the theory of natural selection. The Geographical Distribution, Chapters 11 and 12, both highlight several unusual facts about the geographic distribution of species that might mislead one to believe in a standalone creation hypothesis. Darwin refutes this theory and supports natural selection with observations on the characteristics of seeds, birds, the past of climate change, and other facets of life. In Chapter 13, Mutual Affinities of Organic Beings, Morphology, Embryology, Rudimentary Organs, a single system approach based on principles, is advocated as a solution to the taxonomic dilemma of species categorization. Darwin points out that genetic legacy should be the primary organizing factor for categorization, not the superficial similarities between different species. He talks about the morphology, embryology, and ancestry of primitive organs to further this theory. The conclusions and a summary of Darwin's observations are provided in Chapter 14. Recapitulation and Conclusion. Notably, Darwin acknowledges that his theory may include a single originator that served as the ultimate ancestor of all living things. Though he never says it explicitly, the ramifications of this for humans may undoubtedly spark debate. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.